If this was useful for anybody's watching this, thumbs up. If you like it, thumbs down if you don't. It's okay. Love your comments. Uh, love the, the perspective. All right. Let's jump into uh, another one here. The next one is from Eric. Hey, Lars, thank you for all you do. Hey, Eric, you're so very welcome. Um, Learned a lot from your webcast. Absolutely awesome. And you know what? Here is a really good one. My question is to keep a hole centered between two lines. And if I redimension a one rectangle, how do I keep the hole centered between the two? And he actually showed me a picture. So I will share that picture with you. Uh, so this is what? Um, what Eric sent over. So we have kind of a couple of rectangles and, uh, and we have like, there's a small hole right here um, that he's trying to keep centered, I'm assuming between these two, two rectangles. So let's open up a new document um, and let's model up the two, um, the two rectangles. And this was actually in, uh, in, 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 in English. So let's jump from from metric over two inches, hit okay. You can always set that as your default if you want to. And um, geez, I gotta call up Eric's dimensions again. <laughs> uh, so we have a four by two rectangle with a 375 with 175 in there. All right, let's see if we can do that. New sketch, and I'm just gonna sketch on the top face here. I'm gonna hit my S key, that gives me my center rectangle. And what was it? Two by four inches was the first one. And right click out in space. And let's do a repeat center rectangle. And the next one was 1.75 by 3.75. There we go. Two, uh, two rectangles. So that mimics what Eric's trying to do. Then we're inserting, inserting can't speak, can't speak, <laughs> can't speak or speak. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, folks. Uh, then we're gonna insert um, some some holes in between here, but we want them to stay in relationship with the hole and always be in center. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit C for circle, and I'm gonna draw a circle in here. Now, I know that when I looked at the, the drawing from Eric, it was 0 0.0265 in there. So now we have that little hole. I'm just gonna grab the dimension and move it out there a little bit. Um, so what we are looking to do is we're actually looking to, to place some dimensions that centered it up. And you could do this with some center uh, lines and attach it to that, um, but I wanna show it with dimensions. So what I'm gonna do, because I can see that, that Eric had kind of already started to do that. So let's just go out and place two dimensions, one here, and uh, and one from this edge to to this edge, right here. Now, right now, uh, these two dimensions are, are are referencing the outer the outer edge. Now, I did something similar like this um, not long ago, where I utilized parameters. But today, let's not utilize parameters. Let's do it all in the dimension field. So, what we can actually do is we can do math, Eric. So what we can do is we can double click on the first dimension. This is the horizontal dimension for this. Double click on that and, uh, and then we can start doing math. So what we need is we actually need the outside dimension. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a bracket and I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna find this four dimension. I'm gonna click on this four dimension and you will see that that becomes D1. Okay, D1, because each dimension that you see in here actually gets a number to them. The reason I'm clicking on them is because I can't remember what, what was assigned to them. Minus, and then the other horizontal dimension was this one. Now you see that that is a D3, um, and, and, and this is, it just gets assigned in the order you want. But if we close the bracket, and we do it divided by, well, by four, and hit enter, that will place, and you will see that we get a FX, that's a calculation, that will place um, that in between there. So now we can do the same thing in, <clears throat> in the Y direction. So we click on this dimension, double click on this dimension so that ever comes active, do a bracket, and let's do 
this one, what is apparently is D2, minus this one, what is apparently is D4, and do the same thing, divided by 4. Now, anytime we're changing these dimensions, that will reflect on these holes. Now, I'm assuming, <clears throat> I'm assuming, Eric, that you actually maybe need 4 holes around here, Actually, so what I would do now is I would actually test it. That's actually probably the right thing to do. So if we go in here, we double click on two and we made that fall also. You will see that this distance is capped between these two with that hole, not the, but it's gonna keep the, the X direction in there. Of course, if I change this to one, then you will see that it's gonna do, do that math, okay? Now, if you, I'm assuming, and this can be dangerous to assume things, <laughs> uh, but I'm assuming that you maybe want four of these holes. So you could go around and do it all, but what I would actually do is I would hit C for circle. I would place uh, four circles about where they are going to be. So somewhere around there. Okay, that's about where I want the four circles. Then what you could do is you can go in and say, I'm gonna use these relations for the rest. So I can say, I know that I want this hole to be horizontal to this hole. That's gonna move that up in, in that direction right there. Um, I actually also know that I want this hole to be vertical to this hole. And I know I want this hole to be vertical horizontal to this hole. And I know I want this hole to be vertical to that hole. So th you can use these constraints to kind of move everything um, into, into place. Now, uh, I also know that I want them all to be the same size. So I can go up and do the equal. And I can say I want this hole to be equal to this hole. Oops. To this equal to this uh so now this 63 here is driving um all these holes right so now i just have to change them one place and uh and they all are, are kind of moving along now i also know that right now this hole here can't move up and down uh, but it can move along there so what i could do was i could say you know what i'm gonna do a dimension from this edge to this one. But instead of adding in all that calculation, I can just actually go over and click on this dimension here, hit enter, and now that will be equal to what that dimension is. And I can actually do the same thing if we go down and look at, at these dimensions down here. You can see they're kind of like following the same thing. So I can do D for here to where that goes. And instead of typing anything in, I'm gonna click on the vertical one and hit okay. And now they are all fully defined and all four holes will now follow. So if we're changing this to 125, all four holes will be 125. If we now deciding we're gonna change this again to maybe 0.5, all the holes will follow that. Change this to 0.75, all the holes will follow that. That's a lot of stuff uh, in there, especially if you are if you're brand new. And, and again, there's different ways. There's many different ways you can do this, um, Eric. But I think that if you get and if this was going too fast, just go back and rewatch this section uh, again a couple of times. Maybe get a cup of coffee or something. But if you're a new user out there. Taking the time to learn these kind of things can be really, really helpful. I know it's a little frustrating in the beginning because you just want to get something up on the screen, whatever you're trying to do. But honestly, if you take the time, I think you will find this very valuable um, as you're going through. Thumbs up if you like it. Eric, thumbs down if you don't. Love your comments. Um, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, that will mean the world to me if you do that.